is not my usual purview. Not, uh, not the place to generally find me. But here we be regardless. We're going to be wrapping up the final leg of Psalms chapter 18 that we've been doing in my class. If you've been following and you've been studying along with us there, you'll know that we've been uh, we've been uh, looking, trying to go through all of the Psalms. We pray for that the that my voice will hold up through this whole thing, and we will uh, get to the end of it. We ended um, last time at uh, verse 37, and it has already been stated before. Psalms 18 is a conclusion, a a worshipful praise, if you will, of the pleas of the previous chapters. It yes. is it is David's cry, if you will, um, uh, for aid, and then Psalms is uh, Psalm 18 is God's answer to those prayers. Amen. Um, <clears throat> we're going to pull Psalm 30, uh, verse 37 is where we ended, but we're going to pull back to um, verse 35. Thou hast given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand holdeth me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Amen. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, and my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn until they were consumed. Amen. Now, David makes a couple of comments here. Some some things that we didn't actually pick up on because we were trying to wrap up uh, last week. First of all, the enlargement of the steps. Um, the the path that the Lord wants us to walk on. It is described in the New Testament as being straight. It is described as being narrow. It is not even. It is also described as being a difficult path. It is not one that is easy to follow. That is why the the path of destruction is broad and probably covered with lights and big arrows and safety symbols and guardrails and all this other stuff. It is very easy to walk the broad way. Mm -hmm. The narrow path is much harder. And David offers this idea that, that he, said, he said the Lord enlarged his steps. He basically made him more sure-footed upon this, uh, upon this path. We don't a lot of the times ask for aid in our walk. Right. We, we, we rightly so ask for the opportunity for um, to speak to someone about the Lord, we we, we ask for the, the the for for health and safety and for um, for the the, the 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 salvation of lost souls. But for our own walk, we I don't know that I've ever asked heard anyone ask for sure footedness on their own walk. <laughs> and apparently, this is something that we can get. Amen. This enlargement of our step, the ability. Yeah, I don't know if you ever watched videos or, or seen a mountain goat, and they can walk on impossible ledges, climb areas of of a mountain face that you think there's there's no way, and just as nimble and just mm -hmm. as sure footed as as if they were walking down this middle aisle here at this church, and they've been given ability. Mountain goats, that is. They've been given the ability to know that I, I not, not only instinctually, but on a very base level, that they that they can that they can transverse those areas. Amen. We can too. We, we spiritually speaking. Now, don't I don't, I don't know about if you're a mountain climber, good for you. But I, I don't, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm not promising that you're going to get anything uh, like that that is just granted to you. But um, um, spiritually speaking, our path. Can be easier trodden. Amen. If we uh, if, if we request it, if we request uh, God's guiding hand, if you will, it actually if you pull up to verse thirty five, it says, "Thy right hand hath holden me up." Mm -hmm. The assistance of 
of God, of course, is necessary for, for, for this. We can, we can take a path that is narrow, that is rocky, that is hard to transverse, that is, that is, that, that is by the Bible's own standards, <clears throat> a path that is difficult to walk. Amen. And make it where it's something that you and I can actually achieve. There's only one person that walked that path alone with no aid. Amen. To perfection. Amen. And look at the Gospels. You'll probably find that individual. Mm -hmm. But we're not capable. We, we slip off the path so often it, Amen. It because it's easier. Because Well, why do you think they have highways and interstates and everything else? It's because old, narrow gravel roads are harder to travel. It takes longer to get places on even regular two-lane highways. So they put these arteries throughout the entirety of the, of the nation, these big, wide, six, eight, four-lane interstates make it easier to have, but they're broadways. They're easy ways. But what do you miss? And you, 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 if you think about... <clears throat> That type of travel, everybody says, we, we, you miss so much from the interstate. Mm -hmm. I've talked to a lot of truck drivers, and I say, well, you, you've been all over. You've probably seen a lot. So you don't see nothing from the interstate. You don't see nothing from there. You, you, you're not going to experience a good walk with God on the interstate. Right. And yes, those narrow places, they're harder. They're, they're, they're rougher on the system. Old, old dirt roads and unmaintained uh, uh, tar and chip roads, Got potholes. They've got. They've got. They've got. They've. They, they've got. They've got, got gravel. It'll fly up and scratch your paint. It's gonna put some wear and tear on. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever said our walk was going to be easy. Right. Nobody ever promised you a bed of roses. Right. Um, and but David says that there is a place that we can get to where it's a little bit easier. You know. And I. And I, I think it's just like back to the mountain goat thing. I think. They, they learn that and they keep doing it and they become more confident in mm -hmm. what their abilities are to do. Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Enoch lived this. Right. Enoch held God's hand and every day walked with him and grew closer and closer. It got easier and easier to walk until one day God said, you know, the end of this path is going to lead us on to glory. I'm going, why don't you go with me? Yep. And he did. Mm -hmm. I have wounded them that uh, I have wounded them that were not able to rise. <clears throat> they are fallen under my feet. For thou hast girded me with strength unto battle. Thou hast subdued uh, under me those that rose up against me. Thou hast given me the necks of mine enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was nothing to save them. Even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then, uh, then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as dirt in the street. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made the head of the heathen a people whom I have not known. Shall uh, a, a people whom I have not known shall serve me? Now David's talking more about the enemies that has been set up in his feet. He said, "I have wounded them." That were not able to rise and they were falling under my feet. David ultimately was the victor over all of his enemies. If you, if you read the life of David through 1 Samuel and, uh, and 2 Samuel, um, David had a lot of them. Some of them came from inside of his own household. Right. Um, sometimes his worst enemy was himself. Mm -hmm. um, and David was able to rise above all of these, all, all of these uh, naysayers. Um, but he says he wounded them. To, 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 to wound someone means that you're going to have to um, have a weapon. Right. Um, you, can, you can obviously probably wound somebody with your, with your bare hands, but it's more difficult. But I think this specifically is talking about the, the weapon of our warfare. Your Bible, the Word of God, is, is the ultimate is the ultimate weapon. New yeah. Testament refers to it as a sword. Jesus used it often. And yeah. if we're Christian, we're supposed to be uh, supposed to be doing things that are Christ-like. Uh, and of course, everything that came out of Jesus' mouth was inspired word because yeah. you know, because it, he was God. So um, it's a little bit different than how we use use the word. But it's just like whenever the woman that was caught in adultery was brought before him. Every everybody there were. Many naysayers against this person, 
people that had, at least from a religiously legal standpoint, in, in the Pharisees' eyes, all the reason to stone her. And she was guilty of that. Amen. Let's not let's not forget that. Now, we're, we're going to totally discount the, the, the partner in this adultery. We're going to totally discount all that other stuff and just say, this person was guilty. And there was nothing else to be said about that. Jesus, with with his word, with the word, with a, 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 a word that we have the ability to use, says, he this with it without sin, cast the first stone. Right. Jesus wounded the Pharisees. He left them unable to rise. Did any, did any person in that story ever take a rock up? Ever decide, hey, I think I have the moral standpoint with which to, with which to fight? This is just a, a, an example, of course, and, and not necessarily something that plays directly into the lesson. But that type of use of the Word of God is far more powerful Amen. than anything that, that you can come up with. I see a lot of argumentative, uh, it's especially in social media, especially, uh, in, and I, I work in a barbershop, so there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of talk that goes on in there. I see a lot of argumentative people, and, and a lot of them well-meaning Christians trying to argue their point, and honestly from a, play, a place probably, Probably where where, where they where they know they're right, or at least where they think they're right, but not getting anywhere with the people they're talking to. And and I think the reason is, and I think the reason that we argue to we're blue in the face about Christianity and get nowhere is because we never use this. Right. The Bible is it is the weapon. It is 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 the is the is the ultimate. Um, it is is the ultimate blade with which to wound your enemy, which with, with which to cast them down. You know, I actually I heard someone say that if um, if someone if if you're having an argument with someone and they go to calling you names or making fun of you, just stop because you've won the argument. Mm -hmm. Amen. You you don't you don't have to you don't have to go any further because because now they have resorted to discounting you instead of actually using facts to back you up. When we go before people and, and look, it happened to Jesus a lot. He got made fun of quite a bit. It was always right. Mm -hmm. And where does it come from? Well, it came the words came from Jesus' own mouth, but they were inspired. We have that same ability. These words are just as good as if Jesus was saying. Amen. They're just as inspired, they're just as powerful, and literally 4,000 years after the first letter of this thing was being was, was penned, we're still using it and we're still learning things from it and we're still we're still gaining things from it. And that that means it's alive. Amen. It's a living text that, 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 that has that has power over people. And it, David says here that he that he that he beat them into small dust. The weapons of our warfare are not the same weapons that Joe Blow down the road here uses, or or, or, or the or, or the or the or the intellectual scientific place, and, and yes, we can use science. We can use we can use um, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, we can use debate to get points across. But when it comes right down to it, the place from which our strength arises is right here. Amen. The the the, the, the when 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 all other arguments fail. The word of God is 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 quick and powerful, Amen, and alive. Um, <clears throat> they shall they uh, as soon as they hear me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves uh, unto me. The strangers shall fade away and shall be out of their close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed Amen. be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Now he talks about these strangers. He says, "As soon as they hear me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves uh, unto me." And he said, "Well, brother Adam, that doesn't happen for me. Uh, well, it, it, it doesn't happen for me either. Uh, but you you can read a lot about people that that missionize. Uh, you can even go into the Word of God and look at, and look at Paul and in the ability that he had with with just the simple preaching of the gospel to subdue." Some of his greatest enemies. Amen. People that I mean, I think the Philippian jailer is a, is is a is a good is a good proverb. Do you think the Philippian jailer sat down to his watch that night thinking, "I'm going to let all of Silas out of the prison. I'm going to wash their stripes, and then I'm going to be converted to their way of thinking." I don't think he sat down for his watch that night thinking that. Right. 
but faithfulness, preaching, teaching, the, uh, the fortitude with which to stand with what you believe, despite everything that's going on around you, Amen. was very powerful. It spoke to the Philippian jailer. And, of course, then the Lord spoke to the Philippian jailer. jailer. The, the ability for us to, to, to conquer people, to go over them, and, and I think we, we have seen this through this entire chapter, is reliant upon the Lord, which is why I think in verse 46, David exclaims, the Lord liveth. Amen. Our, our purpose, our power, our salvation, Everything stems from the Lord. Everything that you are, everything that you will be, and everything that you can be is all locked up in Him. And it is our problem mm -hmm. if we can't if we can't take advantage of that. Right. We as saved people, and I am speaking to to, to the saved here. We are by new, by by the own words of the New Testament, joint heirs with Christ. Which means that we have access to the power, the authority, and the, um, the, the place of strength that that provides, being the actual Son of God. Mm -hmm. Joint heirs means that you're, you're a benefactor of all those same blessings that Jesus was a benefactor of. Amen. That's what it means. And yet we walk around defeated. Mm. We walk around, and I think I've made this point in my class before too. For those that haven't got to, you know, be there for it, but but we walk we walk around thinking we have to do all this on our own. That we have to serve God by ourselves. That we have to that we have to struggle every day alone. When He's there beside you, Amen. If you will but turn to Him and take His hand, He will walk with you, Amen. He says that. Blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. A, a firm foundation, a, a sure foundation. It is God that avengeth me and subdueth the people under me. Now, of all these things that he said that David was able to do, he is quick to remind us in verse 47 from whence that power comes. Now, I basically just made this point a, 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 second, ago, a second ago. David wanted to let you that that we have we have all these power, but why? Because of God, because 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 of, because of who we serve, because Amen. of because of the uh, of of the of the salvation, the life that's within us, because He lives inside of us. We are able we are able to do these things. He delivers me from my enemies. Yea, Thou lift, liftest me up above those that rise uh, uh, against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. This is a big place where we fall off. If we are able to take advantage of everything that is contained within chapter 18. And it's a lot. Mm -hmm. It requires an enormous amount of dedication. Amen. And an enormous amount of prayer and faith. But if we're able to, so easily... Would it be to not wrap up the way that David does in, does in verse 49? <clears throat> Therefore, because of all of this, Amen. because of everything that has preceded verse 49, literally 48 other verses talking about how David literally dashed every person that stood in his way upon the stones. Because of all that, I will continue to do what I want to do. I will... Try to do more tomorrow. I will make sure that Brother Larry hears about it and maybe mentions it in his sermon. I will, no, I will give thanks. Amen. Among the heathen and sing praises I name. Now, he even goes further. He says that, you know, it's, e it's very easy to give thanks in here. Thank the Lord for this. Thank the Lord for that. And we do it, and it's good. It's good in here. This is, this is a place where. It is appropriate to give those thanks as part of worship. Mm -hmm. That's what we come here is to worship. Amen. But David says, I will give those thanks among the heathen. Mm. That means out there. Amen. When people say, 
Brother Larry, how do you do everything that you do? Because the Lord's with me. Amen. And you immediately take the spotlight off yourself and point them to the one that is a, that, that that is not only able to do things for you, but can do things for them too. Amen. And perhaps they ask. Perhaps that becomes a deeper conversation about right. spiritual things, about things that affect their eternal destination. Mm -hmm. And sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. Amen. Now, I think verse 50 has a little Easter egg, if you will, um, about Jesus. It says, Great deliverance giveth thee to his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. Right. Now, the seed of David, obviously, being uh, uh, Jesus Christ, um, the, the mercy and the deliverance that Jesus would be rising from the dead um, would, would, would experience as being, you know, using his God uh, to, uh, to, 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 to rise from the dead would, would, would be here. David, uh, once again, and, and the Psalms are full of little references like this of pointing ahead that, hey, David is a, an example of the, of the politically greatest Judean king. Mm -hmm. There's a king coming Amen. that will dwarf David's ability to rule. That's it. That will make his reign, which, to be clear, other than, I guess, Solomon had a little bit more holdings, but other than Solomon was probably the, the most powerful that Israel has ever been in history. Um, it'll make that look like, um, you know, the, 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 they're playing government. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're out there with wooden swords and shields and, and playing and fighting battles and stuff. That, that Jesus is coming. And unfortunately, and, and, and this is no fault of the Scripture, the people that looked at this, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were looking for another David. Mm -hmm. Amen. They looked back at prophecies like this, about people like this, and did not look for what David really was. Right. A shepherd boy. A humble, small person that God used. That's it. And so when Jesus showed up on, on the, 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 the scene, um, the great shepherd, the, uh, a, a lowly carpenter with nary a bit of education that should have been given him the ability to be everything that he was, they completely looked past him because that was not the king, quote unquote, that they were promised. Right. And they did not, uh, they, they did not like it. We usually take this time in my class to have questions. If any of the men, uh, sorry ladies, if any of the men have any questions, I will take questions or comments now and uh, we will be dismissed in prayer. Good stuff. All right, let's go ahead and I will dismiss us and we will uh, get ready for the preaching. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to uh, uh, teach and divide your word in front of God's people, dear Lord, for the uh, opportunity to, uh, to to look in and see some of the hidden truths that you have uh, that you've laid before us, dear Lord. Uh, we thank you for um, the strength with which you've been able to give us to uh, to present, dear Lord. We we pray that you would uh, continue to lead and guide and bless us, and for those that have that have heard that they can take it and apply it to their lives and uh, become better servants for you. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen.